hello everyone flash and welcome to my channel in today's video we're going to be creating this website using html css and a little bit of javascript as you can see it's a very basic home page single page the website so let's get right into the code and not waste any more time in my visual studio code i already added the files we're going to be using and also the images i'm going to put the link to the repo in the description below so you can also download the images i haven't really added any code the only code I have added is in my styles.css and this is the font we are going to be using. I got it from Google Fonts, but you can also get it from the repo. I haven't added anything in the index.html yet since we are going to do that together. So let's get started. Now this is a basic HTML. This is a basic HTML header. We have the meta tags, the title, the, and the body. If you are wondering how I did that, I'm using Emmet and the Visual Studio Code extension. So it allows abbreviation and all. So let's change the title to Mamas. Mm, mamas recipe. And also let's let's link our CSS and our JavaScript to the HTML page so you can have access to them. So to link the CSS, you just put the link tag, express sheets. And then the location, the part in which the image is located. It's not in a different folder. I'm just going to put the name styles.css. But if the styles.css was in another folder, I'm going to put the exact location, exact parts to the CSS folder, to the CSS file, sorry. And then we can link our JavaScript with the script tag. And also put app.js, then save this. And let's just add an edit one saying mama's recipe. save the next thing i'm going to be doing is using a visual studio code extension as well it's called live server so you go to the extension you go to the extension and then search for live server this is it i already have mine installed you have this so you just install it the use of live server is to is to render the changes you make to your index.html when you save it normally if i should just take this drag this and drop it in the browser I have my mama's recipe but then if i should change anything there let's say i change this and save i'll have to refresh every time i make a change which is not something i want so live server will allow us to like we'll refresh the browser anytime we press ctrl save so i'm going to after installing live server you're going to have something like this down here where is it you're going to have something like this down here so you just click on go live and then there it is cancel this one there it is so anytime i make any change let's put the e back and save it immediately refreshes now that i have our live server started let's start implementing the logic as you can see in this this is the first thing we're going to create the hero the first thing we're going to add is a section with the class name of hero section And then inside the section, we have a div with a class name of hero container. You don't necessarily have to use this class name. They're just something I made up. You can use anything you like. Just make sure you like change it in the process when using the styling. Next, after this, we're going to have the nav bar like we have here, this nav bar. So I'm going to use the nav tag. I'm going to give it the class name of nav bar. And then the image, I'm oh, sorry, not the image, and then the logo. We're going to have a div with the class name of logo, and inside that we have the image and the source for the images dot slash images, and then the logo white, right? and then the alternative can just call mama's recipe logo that's probably too long but whatever and then we have a paragraph that says mama's recipe so we have the logo this logo here this logo here and then we have to add this to add that we use the unordered list and give it a class name of nav links Inside that we have a list tag with the class name of navlink. 
and then a link tag which just is not going anywhere since we are not adding that multiple page it's just a single page and then we put the name which is own and then we we'll copy this how many times i think five um i think that's oh, i think that's it this is home page this is about then recipe site am i getting it yeah recipes contacts i think we're missing one that is sign up sign in and then we save this when we check the browser we have this very plain very ugly looking page so before we add this and complicate things more let's add the css for the remaining pages so we don't have a complicated design we can understand what we are doing so now so now let's go into the css and add a little bit of styling to it the first thing i'm going to add is a general styling so the first thing we're going to be adding is this asterisk then before and this is targeting the pseudo class and then i'm going to put box sizing border box and save that and then the body the body has a default padding um i think that's a default margin as well so we have margin just set it to zero and padding zero and then when i save that as you can see there was a change here and then the font family this will change the font we are using so we are using enter and then sans serif so the font has been changed we change the background color as well to black and then we add text color text color is generally it's, i think gray or is it ash i don't know then ash c3 bf bf and then we save that it's not white i think it's like gray or something then overflow x this we keep the any overflow hidden in the x axis like this horizontal but for now i want to comment this out so you can actually see if there's an overflow so actually fix that then we'll uncomment it later and then the image tag should have an object feed of cover and then the unordered list as a default pattern so i'm going to remove that then list style i'm going to put none and the button we have outline none one more thing i would like to add to the image is a max width of 1000 pixels this is just like make it the images are going to come very big like extremely big just like reduce it and not let it exceed 1000 pixels just for precaution we're still going to remove that later a tag the link tag and then text decoration none which is this underline and that has been removed as well these are just the big styling of the website the next thing we are going to add is we're going to get started with the main design and everything so let me add the comments this is the euro section so we can properly navigate around it when the code gets more channel so the we target the euro the class with the name euro section and then inside that we have a padding of 50 pixels that's around around then the height of 100 vh vh stands for the viewport height which is the height of your screen one more thing we have is this image down here this background image this is added with css so we have to add that and to add that we're going to be using the background and we're going to, that will be url so we're adding an image dot slash images and that's the euro.jpg save that 
so we have the image it looks weird now so there are some other things we have to add we have no repeat so the image doesn't repeat itself save and then the one more thing we're adding is background size which is cover but now we have this this gradient this um opacity black gradient on it and we had that with css as well on the same section and to do that we're going to do something more with the background so what we'll be adding is linear gradient we're going to be adding the linear gradient with rgba 000 0.9 that's like the opacity and i'll put a comma here we'll put another rgb here 0.9 there'll be a comma at the middle and then we have that we have the gradient and then since we have that done we are done with the hero section the next thing is the container the hero container div here we have a margin of zero top and bottom and auto left and right this is going to bring it to the center and then we add padding of five pixels top and bottom and 100 pixels left and right that's that looks like a lot but that's what we'll be adding and then we have a border a border of two pixels solid ash just see df nine a five seven i think that's good or is it yet i don't know. save and there we have it and then a border radius so we remove the edges of the box for five pixels and then we have a width of 100 percent and the height of 100 percent as well so now we have that and then a max width of 1000 the reason i like adding a max width is because we don't want this just spreading out and getting wider and wider and wider so once we give it this particular width it cannot exit and that's why we add a max width And then let's fix the logo it's like extremely big let's fix that give it the class name of logo we have a display of flex flex align items center let's align the center there and then the image the logo the direct child which is an image that's what i use as css selectors and then give it a width of 90 pixels and then aspect ratio of one so we have that now the next thing is the paragraph and then give it the margin since paragraph has a default margin of zero the font size should be 1.5 rem i prefer using rem for font size rather than pixels and then a font width of 100 and font style of italic then the font family the font is different from what is used in the entire body so dancing script and the and there we have it then the next thing we want to work on is the nav link so we target the tag the nav tag since there's only one nav tag in the entire page website we have display flex align items center and then justify content space between this is like going to spread out so we have that then a gap of 25 pixels it's not really necessary but in case they get close together there should be a gap between them so they don't join together and then the nav links nav links which is this we have a display of flex as well 
align items, center, justify content, space between, and then a gap of 25 pixels. Mm, I think this is too much, 25 pixels, let's just 10 here, yeah, so we have that. The next thing is the color, I want to change the color of the nav link, so the nav link and the link tag, we change the color to this and the font size, let's reduce it a little, RM, and then that is done, so we have it. We are almost done here. As you can see, there's a difference with the width of the euro container, but I think I prefer this one to this. So we're going to leave this. You never know, I can, you can change it later, but I'm going to leave that for now. Let's add this info to it as well. So we'll go back to the index.html. And then right after the nav, we have, right after the nav, we have a div with the class name of Euro info and then an edit one that says mama's recipe and then a paragraph my own made delicacies did I spell that right okay let's save that and then we have it there so let's go back and style it so we have the div with class name of euro info. We have a margin of zero top and bottom or to left and right. And then a height of 70%. So you can see it. I'm going to give it a background color of red. And then a display of grid. So place content center. And then the reason for this space here is the default margin that they both have, the heading one and the paragraph. So let me reduce this a little. So we have the hero info, the heading one. So we are trying to remove the margin on both the heading one and the paragraph. So we are going to target the two, put a comma, hero info and the paragraph. So we have the margin zero. See they are together now. And then let's text align center so we have that center let's target the other one specifically hero info add one give it a font size of 2.95 rem and i didn't mention in case you don't know what rem is equivalent to one rem is equivalent to 16 pixels so this is just 2.95 times 16 pixels and then we have a color the color is different of gold this and letter spacing of three pixels then text transform uppercase sorry should be in all uppercase and then a font weight of 800 let's remove the background color so we can see what we are doing for the paragraph i just want to reduce it a little bit more the font size reduce it to 0 0.85 rem a little bit smaller and then the font style font style should be italic and there we have it the next section of this is the popular recipes out of everything i would say this is the most complicated part of the whole thing because of this so let's add the html for that we'll go right after this section let's put popular recipes section so we have a section with the class name of popular section i really don't know how to name i just give them random names and then popular container inside that we have an heading three with popular recipes and also let's check it out so we have the I don't want I didn't three with the popular recipes and then this this is inside the container so we're going to have that as recipes container and then inside the recipes container we have a single con a single recipe which is this and that so we have a div with recipe 
So the first thing we're going to be adding is this image. So we're going to have a div with a class name of image container. And then put the image, put the source images. I'm going to be using the euro image as well since I don't have that much image. And then alternative is press it, just put recipe. And then right here, we put another div, which is this div that is hovering on top of it. This particular div. So we're going to put that div with the class name of image overlay. And then inside this image overlay, we're going to be adding the search, which is something I forgot to add. So for us to use this icon, we're going to be using font awesome icons. And I have to add the script for font awesome icon. If you don't have a kit, for font awesome we just go to font awesome just search for font awesome go to font awesome you sign up so you can just create an account after creating an account you go to your page you're going to see this kit and then i already have a kit but you can create a new one just click on add kit and follow the instructions you get one free kit when you sign up for font awesome but if you want to create another kit, you have to pay for that. So I already have my kit. After creating your kit, you just click on it. And then you have this script tag. You can use the script tag or use the link. I'm going to be using the link. You can use the script as well. Just copy this and paste this in the header tag. Just paste that there. Then now you're going to have access to font awesome icons. We're going to be using that here which is the search icon. So you use this i tag and then give it a class name, which will be the class name of the icon. You can also get that from Font Awesome. You can just copy that from Font Awesome. Like if I go back here and I go to the icons, I just search, search. Yeah. Since you have that, we have everything here. And what we're going to be using is FA Solid, FA Search. That is the icon we are going to be using. So we save that. So now we have access to this icon. And then the last thing is this aspect right after the image container. Right after the image container, you add an adding four with the name of the recipe. So potato salad. And then it's pan with the class name of ratings. This will contain the stars, and which is also font awesome icon. So we add I, FA, solid, FA, star, star, and then copy and paste this five times. And then the last thing is this particular review. So we have a span again and put the back brackets one and close it. Let's save that. Now we have one. We are almost done. I won't add this yet. We'll add this later. But let's start this first. Now if we go down here. See, this was the reason I put the max width. This image would have been bigger than this. But because it has a max width of 1000 pixels, it can pass this width. So we have a comment, popular section, and then we have the popular. The section with class name of popular section. We have a padding of 30 pixels so it doesn't stay too close to the edges of the screen. And then the container. It has a margin. Of zero top and bottom or two left and right and also a max width of 900 pixels and then the next thing we're going to work on is the recipe for the recipe we're going to use we're going to do this give it a width of 100 percent for now just give it a width of 100 percent and then the color the color of the text today is the gold color. So we have that. Now the next thing we're going to work on is the 
image container so put the image container we we'll give it an height of 200 pixels and a width of 100 percent and also a position relative because we're going to have a position absolute next to it and then the image container the direct image which is this particular image here we have a width of 100 percent and then an height of 100 percent as well which is 100 percent of this image container so the height will also be 200 pixels and then a border radius of five pixels just to remove the corners the edges as you can see it's reduced now the next thing we're going to work on is the image overlay so we can see it i'm going to give it a background color of red and also a position absolute top zero left zero then the width of 100% and an height of 100%. So there it is. Now we see it. Now all we have to do is change the color from red to RGBA 0, yeah, dark, 0 0.9. But I think that is too dark. We should use 0 0.8. Now we have that. But we don't have the icon. And I wonder why. Let's check if you put the right thing there. Let's try using this, this script tag instead of the link tag. Comment this out. And then paste this. Save. Hmm. I guess that was the issue. So we're using the script tag. So now that we have access to the icons. In the image overlay, we have to place the search icon at the center. So as usual, we use display grid. And then place content center now we have that center then let's change the size let's make it a little bit bigger the icon so the image overlay the icon we have a font size of and i think that's okay for now we don't have the over effect the next thing we take care of is the Let's take care of this, the popular recipe, the heading 3. I'm going to directly target the heading 3 since all the heading 3s we have on the page has almost the same design, this, this. So I'm just going to target the heading 3. But if you have different designs and you decide to use a different heading 3, you can add a class name to it, then target the class name. But for now, since we're having the same design for all the heading 3s, we're going to be using directly targeting the tag. So we'll give it a text align center. Imagine bottom of 50 pixels, push it away from the content at the bottom, and then a color of gold, and then font size of 1.5 RM. Also, we have a text decoration of underline and the margin top of zero since it has a default margin. So, we remove the margin at the top, and there it is. The next thing we're going to target is this edit 4 here. So recipe edit 4. So we have a font size of 1.2 RM. Make it a little bigger. And the margin of 10 pixels top and bottom, 0 left and right. And then the next thing is the star icon. Recipe, sorry, ratings, not recipe. I, we have a font size font size of 0 0.7 rm extremely small we'll give it a margin of minus two pixels just to bring it together a little then the next thing is the rating this text here since it is different from the rest we'll target it separately and i had a font size of 0 0.7 rem as well and the color is the gray color was and that is it so now that we have this done we just have to take care of this aspect and also add it this so let's go back 
to the index.html. So now we have a div with the class name of user info and then the image of the user. We have slash images, then the woman, and then alternative is a woman. Then we have a paragraph that says by, I don't know, Alexander. That is spelled with the R. Then you save that and in the styles of CSS, let's style that. You probably see a gigantic image. As you can see how big the image is. So we have to, that's why I didn't add it before because we have two big images. It's just going to be rough and confusing. So the first thing we're going to do is target the image. Let's reduce the size of the image. So user info. Then the child image tag that is a child. We give it the width of 500 pixels. Sorry, 50 pixels. <laughs> and then aspect ratio of one. So it becomes a square. And then the border radius of 50%. So we have a circle circular form there it is and now that we reduce the image we're going to take care of the user info itself so user info give it a display of flex align items of center and then a gap of 10 pixels and also imagine push it away from the other content of top 20 pixels then save and then we have that next thing I want to do is reduce the size of the it is the size of the paragraph a little and also make it italic so user info paragraph the margin zero the font style italic and also the font size should be 0 0.9 rm and there it is i think we are done yeah now we just have to copy and paste this three times so we'll go back to this place the single recipe then we copy and paste it three times save now we have that so now we'll go back to the styles up here Let's see. yeah yeah you can put it anywhere but i just prefer it being organized so we have the recipes container we give it a display of grid and then grid templates columns repeat three one fr so it's divided into three and then the gap of 40 pixels and the align items of center so we have a gap and that's basically it. Last now to add is the over effect. To add that, we're going to be using media queries over feature. And it goes like at media, then we'll put the over feature. And colon, then over again. What this does that, it targets devices that can actually add over effects. It's like our desktop, PC, but it doesn't, it doesn't have these particular styles to our mobile device that has, that does not have over effects so now we have the the image container over when we over on the image container we want to target the image overlay and give it a visibility of visible and also a transition 0 0.5 seconds is in and out So we'll save that. Now we'll go back to the image overlay. Wait, it, I think it's up here. Yeah, and then give it the visibility of hidden. So it's hidden. But anytime I over on this, we have it. That's very easy. This is very easy to add. Now that we are done with the recipes page, this is like the most complex part of it, and then we are done with it. We just go straight to the. Oh, we are not done. We have to add the button. <laughs> I almost forgot that one. So, let's add the button 
right here outside the recipes container we have a button the class name of btn and then says view all recipes save and then in the styling let's scroll down there it is let's go down here and then the btn we'll give it a background color of transparent a border of zero but border bottom of two pixels solid gold and also a text color of gray and a border radius of five pixels and then we have a padding of five pixels top and bottom but zero left and right a display of flex justify content of center and also a margin of 30 pixels top and bottom or two left and right to place at the center and the font size of 0 0.95 rm and that is all we have to do for the button so now we go to the about section before giving it a section we have to add an horizontal line which is this horizontal line here and then after that we put a section the class name of about section so we just have an heading three that says about us and a paragraph of lorem 30 this will generate lorem snippets for us the reason i'm able to do this is because i'm using visual studio code extension code ms i already said this before you can go ahead and download it so we save that and then we have another horizontal line at the bottom so there's like that and now we add the styling about section hmm, i think that's just let's do lorem 100 I think that's much better so now the first thing i want to style is the horizontal line we'll give it a border top of zero make it thinner and then a border color of gold and that is done now the next thing is the about section padding of 30 pixels the max width is 900 pixels margin of zero top and bottom to left and right now we have that at the center the next thing is the text we already added the styling for the heading tree so the text text align center the color Gold, the font size 0 0.85 rm the line height is 1.5 and then pattern of 10 pixels and then we have that now the last aspect and not the last we have this testimonial we have a section testimonial well can i spell right section and then it did with testimonial container and also we have the heading three these testimonials heading three and also it div the class name of testimonials and another div with the class name of testimonial and then inside this that is when we have the this let's just copy it we are using this p it is almost the same just have to remove this and then a paragraph of lorem 30 i think that's enough and then the image container as well let's copy that we've done most of this css so We paste that here and then copy and paste the testimonial just once 
and then we have this so now let's go to the css testimonial section give it a padding of 30 pixels and then the container margin of zero top and bottom or to left and right and the max width of 900 pixels as well and then for each testimonial sorry for the testimonials container not each testimonial i don't think that's the spelling mm, mo we have display of grid grid templates colon one fr fr which is evenly distributed align items start and then a gap of 30 pixels and then the rating give it a color and one last thing is the paragraph a font style of italic a line height of 1.5 and the font size of 0.9 area footer we have the footer and inside the footer we have paragraph that says copyright and then the copy sign the copyright sign that's 2023 all rights resolved then save now let's start the footer the footer is giving a pattern of 20 pixels top and bottom zero left and right a border top of one pixel solid gold and then the paragraph that's a color of code as well text align center and then we reduce the font size to 0.9 rem the next thing we're going to be working on now is the responsiveness so we're working with media queries so we have done with the desktop view the next thing is the mobile view now to do that we have the at media at a particular max width of I think most of the time people just put a particular pixel and you never really know why they are using that particular pixel. So we are going to check together which screen size to use and what the design looks like at that particular screen size. Now on your browser click Ctrl Shift and I together. You open the dev tools like that. This is where you check your design, see what it looks like. This is what the website looks like at this particular width of 965 pixels. So now let's try to reduce it and see what it looks like. Now you see it looks terrible at this particular width. We're going to target normally we should target 889 but let's just target round it up to 900 pixels so at max width of 900 pixels which means anything higher than 900 pixels this css want to add won't be added if you put mean width here instead of max width this means at the minimum width of 900 pixels which means from 900 pixels upwards anything lower than 900 pixels the design will be added so we use max width of 900 pixels and what do we do mm, i think we just reduce the paddings here and also reduce the sizes so for the euro container we added 100 pixels padding before and that is too much so we just reduce it to 5 pixels top and bottom that is normal 40 pixels left and right and also let's reduce the logo the paragraph let's reduce the size to 1 rm and then the Hero info, the other one, it's kind of big, so we we'll reduce this font size to 2.5 rm, and then that is looking okay. And then we have this. Let's just change it. The recipes container, create templates column, one fr, one fr. Now this looks much better, and everything else looks okay. We are done with that. Now let's reduce it a little bit more looking bad at 691 pixels so we'll create another media query 
at the max width of let's just say 700 pixels or 750 then the euro container change the padding to zero and then remove the border and then at this point we want to remove the nav links and make it display of none now so after doing that we need one more icon which is the double icon so we go to the nav bar right after the nav links we we'll put the fa solid fa align justify this is supposed to be a space so now that we have that we're going to go to the styling let's go up here in the nav bar after the nav we we'll give the nav bar the nav bar so we we'll use display of none when it's on the big screen so this is the desktop view so we have display of none but when we have it at 700 and let's see how well, we've written so much 750 you target that again and then display block and then the font size should be 1.5 rm and there it is and that is all we want to have for now so let's continue so we are going to work on this next this is at 483 pixels so we'll do a media screen media query max width of let's see 500 pixels the euro section we have a padding of 30 pixels and then the euro section heading one oh sorry euro info we we'll reduce the size to 2 rm and we'll reduce the image the logo image as well let's change the width to 70 pixels and then the recipes container the grid template column becomes one fr as well as the testimonials and that is all we have that and we have that now let's check what it looks like on other media on iphone se it looks like this which is nice on the smallest phone here which is galaxy fold still looks nice you can check out some other ones and that is all we're going to be doing with the media queries and all now the next thing we're going to be working on is the javascript aspect for the javascript aspect the first thing we're going to be doing is opening the sidebar and we don't have the sidebar yet so we're going to we're going to add the sidebar so we'll go back to the index.html down here after the footer we had the sidebar so we have a section the class name of sidebar and then close icon close button icon which is fa solid fa x mark and also another class name this is not part of the font of some icon then we have the logo where do we copy that from from the nav bar Let's just copy everything here it's almost the same you just have to change the navbar to sidebar i think that's all so we'll copy this and then paste but then we change the nav to side so we change that to sidebar and then that is all now we add the styling right after the footer we had the sidebar this is it down here for the sidebar we put sidebar we put the position fixed then top zero and then left zero the height should be 100 vh viewport height and the width 100 viewport width we we'll give it background color rgb 0 0.9 and then the display of flex 
flex direction column align items center a gap of 40 pixels and there it is and then a padding of zero top and bottom 50 pixels left and right just in case it doesn't touch this screen now for the sidebar link we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels top and bottom zero left and right and text align center and also the sidebar link link tag give it a color of that and then and then the sidebar which is the close button give it the position absolute and top 20 pixels right 20 pixels so we have it there i think we should give this more it will be 30 and the font size of 1.2 rem let's make it should I make it 1.5 and that is all with the sidebar so for now we have it as display of none right down here display none and now that we have the sidebar implemented we will now go to our javascript to add it when the toggle button is clicked on so in our app.js don't forget to link it in the index.html so now in the app.js the first thing we are going to do is target everything we are going to be needing from the index.html the first thing we are going to be needing is the toggle button so i'm going to say const toggle btn is equals to document.querySelector I prefer using query selector. You can use get elements by class name. But I'm going to use query selector because I find that easier to use. Then we we'll put the dot to notify that it's a class. And the class name is toggle btn wg. And then let's copy and paste this a few more times. The second thing we are looking for is the close button. And then the nav bar as well. We need the nav bar and also let's change the name here to nav bar. We also need one more thing, which is the sidebar container. So sidebar. The sidebar container. Now, the first thing we are going to do is target the toggle button. So, we'll do toggle button dot add event listener. We had an event listener, and the event listener we are going to be adding is a click event. Anytime the toggle button is clicked, this particular function is rendered. This function, and it is very easy. What we are going to be doing there is just take the sidebar container, then the class list. And then add a particular class which we've not added yet but the name is open sidebar save that we don't have the class yet in this styles of css so we're going to hide it down here other classes which is the open sidebar this is just going to change it to display flex. So we we'll save that. So anytime, let's open the dev tools again. Anytime you click on this, it's supposed to add the open sidebar class, but then it is not. I know what the issue is. The issue is that there was never a toggle button. I didn't add that class, which is supposed to be here. This, I'm supposed to add. A toggle button class here toggle btn so we didn't have access to it in the app.js that was the issue so now when we click on this it works the last thing is the close button so just copy this 
and paste it down here then change this to close button and instead of adding this to the class list we're going to be removing it so now it works fine you can add and then remove and when we have we have the sidebar done we have the media queries done the last thing to be done is the sticky now to do that the first thing we're going to do is actually add the styling there so we're going to have a class with the name of fixed nav and then it's going to be position fixed as well top zero left zero and then right zero as well that's the index of 10 we can actually use one or two let's try two background color of black and then a padding of zero top and bottom and then 50 pixels should we use 60 left and right if i should take this and add it to the nav bar let's try to add it manually first to see what it looks like so if i add this to the nav bar i had fixed nav and i save it we're going to have that so that is it but instead of adding it like that, we're going to be using JavaScript to add it. So let's remove this and then go back to the app.js. I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call this fixed nav. An arrow function. You can use a normal function as well. I'm just really used to arrow functions. The first thing we're going to do is add an event listener to the window. So window dot add event listener. We are adding the scroll event. Anytime the window is scrolled, this is going to be called. So this function is going to be called. To know what's going on, we're going to let's console log scroll. Just a text of scroll. Now that we are here in the dev tools, you go to the console, this part. Now you see that there's no console log, there's nothing here. But the moment I scroll up, oh sorry, I forgot to invoke the function. You invoke the function here so save that see we don't have any information here but the moment i scroll you can see the event is being called so what we want to do is if the window dot scroll y the y axis it is if it is greater than the window dot inner height and this stands for the height of the screen if it is greater than it then we have the navbar dot class list and then we had the fixed nav but if it is not more than it we don't add it we remove it back so now this should work fine it's going to be see it is added but when it is like this, it's not added. But the moment you go out, we have the number. And that is everything we have to add. I think we are done. Finally, we have the fixed nav. We added the sidebar. We know how media queries work. And that is all for this video. Thanks for staying. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video.